Hey everyone and welcome back to a new video. So we've just had the reveals from Warhammer Day 2023 and we saw both some very anticipated reveals such as the new Necrons and Adeptus Mechanicus codexes and models and some surprises including new striking scorpions for Kill Team and a swathe of new models for Warhammer the Old World. And in this video I want to talk specifically about those Old World reveals going into what I liked, what I didn't like and how I feel going into the announced 2024 release. If that interests you then let's jump right in. So we got a great look at some of the new Bretonian models coming to Warhammer the Old World including the Handmaiden of the Lady, the Lord on Pegasus which can be built as a Duke or Baron, a battle standard bearer that seems to come from the same kit as the Lord and the Knights of the Realm on foot. Now focusing on those models specifically I feel that these are absolutely exquisite. The detail of the models is right up there with the quality we see and have come to expect from Games Workshop and they really show how far Warhammer models have come in recent decades. If you've watched my videos before though you'll know that I talk about the implied narrative in these models and all of these show how GW is able to convey so much of the character of a model in the posing design and arrangement. It's a design approach we see really clearly in Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar and I'm really glad GW has continued to lean into that with these new models instead of trying to bring them down to the level of the older ones but we'll come back to that later. There's also a great amount of versatility to these kits which I really like. I mentioned that the Lord can be built as either a Duke or Baron and there's clear aesthetic differences between the two. Similarly the knights on foot have a choice of weapons which not only offer that in-game versatility but also means we'll have plenty of extra sprues for kit bashing and customising our armies and that's something I think we're all going to appreciate when these models come out, the customization and creativity we can bring to them ourselves. But similarly I think quite a few Age of Sigmar players like myself can see what this range offers to that setting too. Cities of Sigmar have just had a new range and I can already see how these knights on foot could be good proxy models for some of those units. Even if it's not a straight swap, the new Bretonian kits may offer plenty of kit bashing options. And I think that's something that will become more apparent as we see more factions in the old world, where Wood Elf Sprues open up new kit bashing ideas for Sylvaneth armies and so on. Looking at these few models specifically though, I think there's a lot to really be impressed by, but that said, they form only part of that wider Bretonian army in the old world. And that brings me to what I didn't like so much, which as you might expect, was the older ranges coming back. To be clear, we knew these older models were going to be part of this game. Games Workshop has talked about it in previous updates and even saying they wanted players to use their older models. And even though they clearly could have communicated it better, it feels pretty obvious that given they're just about managing one new Necron and Admech model to accompany their Warhammer 40k codexes, they were hardly going to manage nine new army refreshes for a game that sits on the fringes of their IP. After all, they've got more Space Marines to make. But in all seriousness, there is a real problem with these older ranges and the first part of that is scale. Games Workshop has spoken about scaling in the old world but that has largely been about base sizes. What we're now seeing however is that these new models are substantially bigger than the older ones and it feels jarring to look at. To show you what I mean you can see in this image from the trailer that the new knights on foot make the men at arms models look like hobbits or similarly the latter make the knights look like giants and beyond the obvious fact that these models are supposed to be the same size and they're not it feels weirder because Games Workshop is usually really conscious of the visual language of their models. As I said earlier, they think about poses, scaling and arrangement to tell subtle stories and convey meaning in their models. But taking the knights on foot as an example, a lot of that subtle language conveying what it means to be and act like a knight in Bretonia gets washed out by the fact that they look about seven foot tall and newer players are going to wonder why that is. Again, they said older models would sit with newer ones or at least encourage that idea. But this feels a bit starker than was implied and given what Warhammer is such a visual hobby, it's hard to overlook that even though the new models look absolutely fantastic. I'm also really confused by what makes one kit resin and another plastic. Warhammer the Old World is being led by the Forge World team so I get that resin would play a part but we've got new and old models that are resin and old and new models that are plastic. I feel I'm missing something really obvious so please do let me know in the comments if you know why it's like this but it poses a real issue because resin isn't something you want to throw at new players, it's a weird material for miniatures at the best of times. And while I'm sure Games Workshop might say that Warhammer the Old World isn't a flagship game and so it isn't aimed at new players, as I've said in previous videos, one of the most popular Warhammer games of all time is the Warhammer Total War franchise set in the world of Warhammer Fantasy. If people who love that game want to get into Warhammer and they want to play as Bretonians for example, they've got a lot to learn about plastic and resin on the way in. It just feels oddly thought through and inconsistent and that seems to be really turning some players
years off the game right now, even before it hits shelves. And then there's the pricing. We know that kits will likely price similar to current Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar kits, and Games Workshop seems to be aware of that. They've just announced that the regiments we've seen, and future ones, will be coming with enough plastic miniatures to make full regiments. For example, the peasant archers will come in boxes of 32, which is almost double what we see in the photo here. That at least helps, and while I think people will still be turned off by the older sprues, at least our money will go a bit further than it first seemed. However, we haven't seen the rules yet, and as with the Horus Heresy game, they might be selling bigger unit boxes because the game is more brutal, and so you need more and more models to fill a decent sized army. In any case, one of the big bits of news is that we have a release window of sorts. It's been confirmed that Warhammer the Old World will be one of the first releases in 2024, which is great, but we don't know in what format that is, and given we've not really seen anything outside of the Bretonian faction besides one Tomb King model, it suggests that we might need to measure our expectations a little. Personally, I think we'll get a launch box with some of the new plastic Bretonians we've seen and some new plastic Tomb Kings, which will be designed to supplement existing armies and teach the new game to play players, and then we'll see the other factions updated slowly over the coming months and years. I could be wrong there, but I can't see a massive surprise coming given the glacial pace of news and updates over the last four years. In any case, we're getting a new dedicated website on Monday the 16th of October, and promises of future updates, not just on other models, but also some of the books coming with the game, and I think that's what we all want to hear more of right now. But that's just a brief look at what we saw from the recent Warhammer The Old World update. I personally feel on the edge of excitement and trepidation, but ultimately it's because I really want this game to succeed, and I sense a lot of Warhammer fans are in the same boat. But what do you think? Are you excited about what we saw or disappointed, and why? And what do you think we'll see come out in early 2024? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And as always, a big thank you for joining me today. If you did like the video, please do click the like button, and subscribe if you'd like to join me for future Warhammer videos, including on Warhammer The Old World, and I hope you are able to join me for my next one. Until then, however, take care.